Hey guys, I'm Shana X Lee. Welcome to today's segment of, well, food, glorious food. Oh my gosh, the savory bites. Now, savory food can be one of these things that people look past as being delightful and wonderful. So today I want to really burst that bubble and give you guys a different perspective. Yes, we're going some meatballs, but we're going to go with no meat. And I want to give you guys a cool variation of how to cook really healthy but super tasty without having the meat. Now the meat eaters, if you wish, you can add meat to your heart's desire. But let's start with a vegetable component and then you guys can add your own favorite bits around that. So before we get started guys, how's everybody going with this incredible crew? Like how much are you guys getting given? Like, what are you guys loving the most? Please comment below. What are you loving the most about this incredible group and all these wonderful presenters? Or what are you loving the most about quarantine, right? I'm a single girl, I've been out on the dating scene and I think the best question I actually had for guys has been, what are you enjoying most about quarantine? And a lot of them, shocked as they might be, are coming up with some really great answers of like, hey, I finally got to that stuff that I've been wanting to do, or hey, I'm finally getting like all of these things organized and more time cooking or more time with my loved ones or more time for myself. So today, let's get a little bit more time for ourselves and our loved ones and let's create some really nourishing, delicious food that hopefully you guys will be able to share with us within the community your own versions of what you decide to create with this base recipe idea. So, our, our no meat lentil meatballs are pretty cool. They're nice and simple once you get the gist of it. Um, but we're going to well start with these vegetables, guys. So, you know what? I started chopping these and then I remembered something. A lot of us are quite lazy, and even in quarantine, even as a chef, I can be lazy too. So let me share with you a bit of a, a, my best friend that I have. And you know what, if you don't have a best friend like I have, maybe you want to sit here and chop away. But otherwise, I have this thing called a food processor. And this is my best friend. It saves me so much time. So all I'm going to do is pop in there my capsicum, pop in there my uh, celery. I'm going to pop in there my parsley. We're going to pop in there half of our garlic. And we're going to process this down. Why? Because I'm lazy. But two, because, well, who's not lazy? Who wouldn't like to save a bit more time? Like, get this done, then go have more fun with the kids and the family, right? So... All I'm doing is quickly popping it in here, popping my lid on. And we have something that looks a little instant and beautiful like a salsa. And this one, we're going to then pop our uh, straight into my pan. So guys, I've got a nice hot pan here. I'm in quarantine, so I'm gonna use my hands. God gave us our hands first, right? So let's use them and uh, less dishes. So straight into my nice hot pan that I've got here. I'll shift it over here for you guys. And we're just wanting to cook this down a little bit so it's more malleable in the batter for the meatballs. And already it smells amazing. As soon as it goes in here, it becomes tenfold amazing. Nice hot pan, we're just gonna cook that through. While that one is cooking, I'll just bring up my reminder so that I don't lose myself because if you can't tell, I talk a lot. So all we're wanting to do is just cook that off, release the flavours, really open them out, soften them a little bit so that when we put our lentils and whatnot into the mixture, we've got a really nice balanced flavour. Um, and there's nothing worse than, you know, half of it being cooked and then suddenly a, a raw bit jutting out somewhere. So. From there, that's cooking off nicely. Our next step will be then adding in our other ingredients. So we have here um, some oregano. I've got some oregano, some thyme, some basil. I've put the recipe there, guys, but please understand, it's really about just being creative. What do you feel like? What do you like the most of? I'm very much, um, one of my modalities is, is as a genetic profiler. So I'm really about understanding, my clients understanding what's the best herbs for me right now, right? And because they're dry, if they were fresh, I'd put them in at the end, but because they're dry, let's pop them in the pan. Let's get them budding. Let's get them opening up with that heat so that the rest of our sauce comes up super flavorsome. That's almost done there. Then what we're going to do 
is take our food processor, pop our blade back in there. Into this, we're then going to take our lentils. Now, I've made these myself. Lentils are so easy to make, guys. <laughs> On my channel, I've already been creating the most amazing lentil dishes. I've made lentil brownies, lentil waffles. Uh, I'm soon to be making lentil pikelets, savoury pikelets. But lentils are like the unknown superfood. These are not only highly fibrous, they're also incredibly diverse as you can make them into firm dishes, soft dishes, dals, curries, like I said, brownies. Yes, brownies. Um, but the other thing is, is that they're incredibly good for your digestive system. They're also incredibly good for your brain. There's a lot of nutrients inside the good old lentil. So in here, I'm popping my lentil straight into the dish. I'm throwing my cooked brown rice. You can also use oats. That's just going to go straight in there. Then we're going to throw in our smoked paprika. Who doesn't love smoked paprika? It tastes amazing. We're also going to throw in the nutritional yeast, guys. This here is incredibly good for you. It's full of lots of vitamins. Lots of vitamin K. Really good as a, a vegan cheese alternative. So if you are not having any dairy issues, and dairy is fine, you could absolutely use parmesan cheese for this one. It's up to you. No worries. I'm not going to judge. So that goes in there. We also need a nice hearty sized um, two tablespoons of, uh, oh, it just fit. Have you had that before where you've gone to put the spoon in the jar and you're like, anyway. So, <laughs> well, apparently it's temperamental. This is a lopsided jar. So two tablespoons of tomato paste in there. A hearty, beautiful, lovely amount of fresh cracked pepper. Yum! As much or as little as you like. A nice little bit of salt into that one. Oh, there's a water bottle. Nice little bit of salt in there. We've just had a water bottle give us a bit of a surprise. A bit of salt. I'm gonna get my pan hot. Okay, then in here we're gonna pop our beautiful veggies cooked straight in there. No. Chef's hands, don't do this at home, please use a spatula. Who's our chefs out there? You know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. In there, nice little bit of herbs. All into the food mixer. From here, hot tip guys, always do your dishes as you're going. There's nothing worse than enjoying a celebration of the dish you've cooked and then turning around and being like, oh, dishes. So do them as you're going. Makes life so much easier. All right. These are going to go straight in here. Don't worry about it being hot because we've got the lentils that are cold, okay? So it's not going to destroy anything. Give it a scrape down on the sides because we don't want it to be too cooked. We do just want it to just pull together. Um, a little bit longer. And then, my friends, that not only smells divine, it looks pretty fantastic as well. And you'd all actually not really even know that that's not beef or chicken or pork. Oh my gosh! It's not pork. It's not beef. So this here looks just like beef mince, right? Right? So if you want to, you can sit here and try and do this if you wish, or you can just do it the way I like to do it, which is quite rustic. And there's a reason, there's a method to my madness, my friends. Who likes, has, oh, I forget to ask the question. Who likes lentils? Has anyone actually not tried lentils? I'd love to see a comment below, guys, when you guys are watching this on replay or if you're watching it live shortly. If you've never used lentils and I am popping your lentil cherry, please let me know. This is an exciting conversation because I would love to know how you go with lentils? Am I building a new relationship with you with lentils? Now the reason why I'm doing this rustic is we're gonna bake them in the oven, guys. And the reason why I'm doing it rustic is, if you can just imagine, put your mind's eye to this tray, we've baked off these little goodies, the outsides are crunchy and crispy, and the insides are still soft and gooey. Oh my goodness, right? 
Amazing, right? There we go. Now, I have got in the recipe you can add flour to this. Absolutely, you can. But I've been using fresh lentils, and I know that these ones stick really nicely. But the flour can make them a slightly more firm mixture. All right. Conk them on the tray like this. If you want to make perfectly round meatballs, I definitely recommend adding the flour. It will help them to bind and become a lot more firm setting. But for today's purpose, these are going to be just brilliant. See how using my spoon is a lot quicker? Boom. These ones then go in the oven at 190 degrees to bake away, and then we're gonna make the sauce. So, meatballs aren't complete without a beautiful tomato sauce. So what we're going to do, and the good thing about this is, rinse your bowl out. You don't need to be too special about it. We're gonna use that in a second. So, for this sauce, you can definitely use an, a bought made jar. Absolutely, I'm not gonna judge you. Use what you've got. But if you want to make a cool fresher one, use some fresh tomatoes, fresh garlic. Or if you've got some jar of just some, some jarred diced tomatoes, no problem either way. Um, it depends on what your beliefs are as to whether or not you're okay with canned tomatoes. Yes, there are a lot of conversations about um, oxidization of the tomatoes when, you're, uh, when they're in a can. So actually when you open up a can, some people believe that it can actually um, oxidize and cause the acidity in the tomatoes to cause all kinds of health problems. Just one of the things out there, just in case. But it's entirely up to you. The one thing I do know is you never, ever, ever should leave cans open in the fridge with the food in them. That becomes a problem. So into this is our tomato. Then we're going to add in the good old balsamic vinegar because tomato, you always want to add an acidic base to it as well as a sweet base to it. Balsamic vinegar hits both points. Then we're going to add in some garlic because garlic's who doesn't love garlic? Yum, fresh, jarred, whatever you've got, go to town. Depends how much of a garlic breath you're okay with having. In here I've got mixed herbs and some cumin. Cumin is another unsung hero. It's incredible, wonderfully good for you. I'm gonna pop that in there. In here I've got more smoky paprika, yum, and cayenne pepper. Now, the cool thing that people don't know is that herbs are actually incredibly good for you, really, really good for your immune system. And at the moment with the global situation, boosting your immune system is probably a really good thing to do, right? So let's get in there, that, that um, paprika. And the other one is, is the uh, cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper, I make a mean Mexican hot chocolate with some uh, cayenne pepper in it. Ooh la la. But cayenne pepper in this sauce is gonna give it a really good kick. I think I was a little bit advantageous with the amount of cayenne pepper I put on that. Kelsey and I are going to want to eat this later. Yes. Into there, we're then going to also add some soy. You could use tamari, you could use um, Bragg's amino liquid, whatever you want as like a salty sauce, sauce version. Um, your prerogative. So just about a teaspoon to a tablespoon, depending on your flavor. We're going to add in a, a touch of salt, a dusting of salt, however much you wish to have. You can always add more later, guys. Please remember that. And as always, black pepper. Black pepper is another one of those immune-boosting herbs and spices. Give them a really good mix. We're going to just blend this one down lightly. Give it a good mix. If that doesn't make mama happy, nothing will. That there, have a look at that. And then what we're gonna do, here's a pan I prepared earlier, nice and hot. It was actually sitting there on my leg, nice and warm. Into here, we're just gonna heat that. Now I wanna do that because I want it to pop the, the acidity in it. I want it to bring the salts out. I want it to naturally caramelize its own juices and create its own sweetness. Another thing I've been known to do many a time before is in that you could easily hide vegetables on your children or your partner. <clears throat> and things like, um, you could chop into that carrot. You could throw into that more celery, more garlic. 
You could throw in there some beetroot. You could throw in there pumpkin. And none of them would ever, ever know. And you could literally be creating like a 10 vegetable sauce and feeding it to them. And they won't even realize. Do you see what kind of genius creation this can be? So, please know that. This is a sauce that I'm giving you the base. We would love for you guys to join in all these different videos. I know that Aria made amazing meatballs the other day, like proper meatballs, and I watched her live. And if I don't know about you guys, it was divine. A nice little sauce to go with that one too. The other thing you could do is then actually use the same kind of sauce for bolognese, for shepherd's pie, for cottage pie, for lasagna all the possibilities and if you're then adding all those vegetables can you see how that becomes a mother's uh mother's uh shield for their family in giving them all the veggies all the fruits everything that they or all the vegetables and all of the, the goodness their bodies need at this time to really be thriving guys so these are a really good easy dish to make sure that you just start out every dish with this and then you know that you're going to be starting off with the right foot forward so I've also then gone ahead and created a beautiful salad last night for myself. Salads are so wonderful. So you could serve this on pasta, you could serve this on rice, you could serve this on anything you like. You could do just simple zucchini noodles, whatever you like. But for me, uh, with my genetic type and my body at the moment, it's really, really awesome for me to get lots of greens and lots of vegetables. So what I've done Salads need to have variety of textures, variety of flavors, right? You want to have all the good bits together. So I've put in here ribbons of carrot, ribbons of cucumber, but I've shredded the celery, uh, sorry, shredded the cabbage. I've chopped through some purple carrot. carrot. We've chopped through some radishes. We've chopped through some on random bits of zucchini. Like salads are where you want to throw all the random bits. The other thing I've added into the salad is more lentils. Does anyone know what this one is? What's that one, guys? Anyone know? Pomegranate. It's a pomegranate seed. So if I actually go like this, look at that beautiful color. So it looks like blood, right? Pomegranate is one of those, those plants, those fruits that has such a robust, voluptuous um, juice in it, anything. It matches the color of our blood. So what's it probably gonna be good for? The heart, guys, the heart. Our foods that we eat nourishes and feeds our body. So when we're selecting what we're willing to eat each day, think about what part of the body it's very similar to, right? Lentils look a lot like the brain. All the little funny bits of the brain, if you cut it open, it looks just really weird and kind of on the way that it's all shaped together. So naturally, it's gonna be really, really good for the brain. So I'm gonna use this as a salad, just because I'm weird like that and I think it's fine. <laughs> you might wanna use pasta. You might wanna just use the carrot and zucchini pasta and slightly warm them up. Absolutely fine, however, which way you like to do it. I'm not gonna be bothered. Then after that, what we're gonna do is then take our meatballs, which just need a little bit longer, and we then pop them on top, glasses. We're then gonna pop them on top and serve that with lashings of beautiful sauce. Guys, this one here is one that you can really, I'll pull it out now because we're not gonna have much more time, but it's really important to, um, I'll be good in a couple more seconds. It's really important to sit there and really create um, wholesome dishes. So I hope you guys can see how we've managed to bring together so many different vegetable components into the one dish to feed the family for breakfast or lunch, those meatballs go great in the lunch box for the kids with a bit of sauce on it, right? And then you've got things like, you could definitely take that exact mixture, guys, and you could morph it. So there's no reason why you couldn't add in 300 grams of chicken mince or 300 grams of beef mince or turkey mince or pork mince or lamb mince, whatever you want. Adding in all of that as the basis plus your other, your, your protein on top of it, you can see how you're getting a really winning combination to really assist the whole family in getting a nutritious meal. Um, meatballs, these can also be made in muffin tins, right? So if you've got muffin tins and segregated them down into muffin tins, you've then got a savory muffin. Yum! Chop through some shredded um, uh, semi-dried tomatoes and you've got a really great combination that's gonna work out just perfectly for everybody. 
Yum. I'm thinking about that right now, actually. <laughs> so, guys, I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration. What would you try at home? Would you really do this? And can you think of someone else's dish that this would complement? Oh, here's a challenge for everybody. As you're watching this, what do you think about maybe getting someone else's video and tagging it into the comment of this video or vice versa and being like, I think, I don't think all the judges, everybody in this community would love it if you guys got involved and was like, Shana sauce with Aria's meatballs or that salad with this one over here, right? Let's create some really cool creative combinations because there are, hot tip, no rules when it comes to eating. There's no rules when it comes to recipes and food. Recipes are only a guide. It's your imagination and your willingness to try different things that will give you the most incredible creations here on the plate. From my plate to yours, guys, with love and light, I'm gonna share with you, I'm gonna quickly plop a couple of these onto the, onto the tray. Just so I can show you guys the decoration point. One. Two. And then, let's pop some gorgeous lashings of sauce across the top. Are you drooling or is that just me? Nice bit of sauce on there. Even the cat thinks it sounds amazing. A little bit of a garnish. Fresh cracked pepper. You are welcome, my friends. You are welcome. The, the husband will love it. The wife will love it. The kids will love it. And if not, get the kids involved in making it. Maybe get them rolling them out, guys. Enjoy the day. Enjoy the moment. Get creative. Share with us what you're creating. Give us your feedback. And let us know, what are you loving about this group the most? I'm curious. Is it the contribution? Is it the ideas? Is it the inspiration? Is it the motivation? Or just the camaraderie, guys? What a great opportunity you guys have in such a beautiful community of wonderfully talented and giving humans. From my heart and my plate to yours, we love.